Okay, so I wanted to quickly go over the um, astrology of this week. So we're going to start from today. Today is Tuesday, July 6th, um, 2021. And I'm going to take it until maybe next Sunday, the 11th. And that pretty much um, just covers the bigger uh, theme of the week, um, which is basically a second pass over what we did last week but it will be a lot more uh, I don't want to say pleasant it will be pleasant it's not exactly a party it's not exactly wow this is amazing but it's more like okay the problems and the hell maybe that someone or many people experienced last week last week was pretty hellish for me and a lot of people I know those stressors will be um, sort of healed a little bit this week um, because Venus is now moving into that place that Le that uh, that Mars was so that Leo degree is being um, kind of softened now so the, the bigger picture here um, and I'm going to just do, do like a big picture kind of idea of like what is going on in the with the planetary weather and then I'm just going to go through and do the rising sign you could read for your sun sign too listen for your sun sign but I suggest people re, uh, listen to their rising sign because it just it fits best with where the planets are um, landing in your chart what areas of life are being lit up um, and it's it's just better <laughs> if you don't know your rising sign you can go to I think astro.com and just plug in your information you have to know your birth time and it will give you your ascend it will say ascended or ASC and that's your rising sign um, or if you want to get a reading from me we could go over it together and I could give you a lot more information than that but um, so basically because this is kind of a second pass over the energies that were happening last week and are still here I am not doing an individual uh, five or six minute uh, video for every sign because I think that's too much and it's too much to upload and I can't do it so um, especially with this it's just kind of a, um, a variation on a theme basically and it would be helpful if you went back and looked at the videos that I just did last week um, for your rising sign um, or if you just want to look at your sun sign just you know the, the sign that you were born under if you're an Aquarius or something then that is your sun sign um, because that will give you the crux of the situation and give you the areas of life that this is happening in um, and then this is kind of more a, um, a top off of what is happening now so what is happening now we're in the middle this year and going into next year of a big um, coming together and pulling apart of Saturn and Uranus and those energies are not exactly uh, working together well because Saturn is like a wall and like no uh, there's you know red tape this is why you can't do it we're not allowing you um, just uh, you can't board the plane you know there's something that is obstructing flow it is solid it is a wall it is a a, um, a barrier it is um, it's a lot more than that I mean Saturn is is more like the tension and the responsibility and the duty that must be there for things to actually work and yeah it's not fun but if we didn't have Saturn nothing would work the tension on those belts in your car um, the like serpentine belts and things like that they have to be at the right um, tightness they can't be loose and relaxed which might seem like better but they have to be tight they have to be working and applying pressure in order for things to flow I guess that's maybe not the best uh, metaphor but it's just it, there's a certain way to build a foundation and it needs to be built according to XYZ there is no other um, th there's no maybe with Saturn it's it, this is the way it is and um, it's, it's like an immovable object I don't know who coined that phrase but that's like what comes to mind and then um, Uranus is like <laughs> completely opposite energy it's more of like we're gonna blow up the wall we're going to um, oh man 
we're going to, uh, I'm just in a, kind of a, an emotional place still because of what is happening in Miami with the condo that collapsed. And it's like a horrible, horrific situation there. And especially because there were pets in the one remaining tower and they just blew that tower up on 4th of July. But I won't go any further into that, but um, I just wanted to explain why I, I seemed a little taken aback there. But um, Uranus is like, we are going forward, we don't care. Um, this is un, we, unstoppable energy, blurting things out energy. Um, maybe uh, just this, I can't stand it anymore. I've got to get this thing off of me. Like, it's just that moment where you're like, I'm not even thinking at all. I'm, I'm not even, th like, there was no thought process. It's just burst through, uh, uh, you know, liberate, uh, freedom, um, surprising changes of um, wh whatever you were doing is now going in a completely different direction. It's quick, it's uh, breakthrough oriented, breakdown oriented, and it has to do with um, change, urgency, and um, and the brilliance of innovation. It's just like, what if we did this? It's, it's like throwing everything out the window and saying, you know, that's it, we can't take it anymore, we're going, you know, to do this. So those two energies obviously <laughs> are not like, oh yeah, we're in complete agreement. Um, so that's happening this year, it will be going into next year great, why does that mean anything for this week? It's because just like in the beginning of January, beginning of February, these energies were coming to a big high point at that time. And now we are having a, another high point. We just had that exact high point last week, um, just days ago. So we're still in this really big um, peak period, kind of like if it was kind of up in January, February, and then it kind of relaxed a little bit. And we're like, okay, this is sort of normal. And now it's back up again. And we're having a lot of this crazy energy coming up. It is now going to go a little bit more relaxed and it will have another high point of energy um, being kind of crazy around um, end of November into December. But we won't talk about that now. We're just talking about now. So that is why this is more important this week and extra important this week, because if that were not enough, Mars came through and Mars is like gasoline on a fire. And Mars is like, yeah, I'm going to come in and oppose Saturn and I'm going to square Uranus too. So that's just like, oh boy, wow, we didn't have enough problems here with just working with this, which is really not... Um, you know, flowing energy, and, and now this is coming onto it, which is just turning up the heat. It's um, angering people. It's giving a lot of fuel, a lot of energy, a lot of get up and go. Sometimes, which can be good for someone who doesn't have a lot of voice or a lot of get up and go normally, but uh, people, most people do. And when you add more in there into that situation, it's just like um, you just put a match on a on an already dangerous situation. So that's kind of what we saw last week, um, just a few days ago with a couple of things where you know it got to that breaking point of Mars is force. I'm gonna just bust down the door. I, um, I'm not waiting, it's, it's like Mars is the gas pedal, uh, Saturn is the brake pedal. And Chris Brennan of the Astrology Podcast quoted, that's his quote. That is not my quote, but it's amazing and it's very easy and simple to understand that. That Mars is like, I'm pushing the, the pedal to the metal and uh, Saturn is like, no, you're not. We're going to put on the brake. And that's just, it's a circular, very frustrating energy. So that's what just happened in the past few days. And I, in the past uh, videos, I showed everyone where that was in your chart. Now we are we have moved past that. It's still here, but it's getting a lot of help because what is happening is Venus is moving in and she's going over that same point in Leo that Mars just went over. So she's going to be opposing Saturn and then squaring Uranus. And that's not exactly like break out the, you know, party hats, but it's more kind of a healing balm that um 
like if you had a wound from Mars and you're like, okay, this was horrible. And now Venus comes through, she's kind of putting like a healing balm on that wound. And it's like, okay, we're not having like the greatest time in the world, but this is kind of nicer and this is kind of softer. And we can put something nice onto this situation. In that process though, Venus is kind of torn up from this because she doesn't want to be doing this. She wants to be giving you the best, most beautiful, uh, pleasurable thing. She wants the colors, the brightest and the most vibrant. She wants the flowers to smell the most beautiful. Um, she wants your environment to be wonderful with music and happiness and joy and anything that brings you pleasure. That's her job. So to be this kind of nursemaid to this massive, uh, crisis that's going on is like not the funnest thing for her to do and she will feel like hurt in the process Th that Venus energy is like you know kind of the Venus energy of love relationships um, it can be platonic or romantic relationships but what we see in the world as value love beauty um, art um, things that are pleasant to us. Where do we find the joy in the world? She's working way over time at this point to be like, okay, I'm putting out this situation um, the best, the, to the best of her ability. And um, we can only hope for the best. And I think it will feel better, but it's not gonna be, um, you know, like the best day of your life or something. Maybe for some people it will be. <laughs> But um, so that's basically the gist of that, that we're coming through with a healing energy that will be um, better than what it was this past week and few days. But it also pays the price because Venus opposing Saturn, that's a cold, not fun energy of like Venus love and beauty and what we find wonderful in the world. And Saturn is like walls, duty, responsibility, um, you know, you can't do this. It's like maybe feeling happy that you took care of a bunch of taxes that you are like lists and bills and um, I don't know, um, you know, how, how can, you know, Venus uh, help this other situation that is just non-moving, it's a non-moving, uh, you know, heels dug in situation. Um, it's like, yeah, Venus Saturn is more like, yeah, it could be we came to an agreement, a very serious, Saturn is serious, it's, it's not, and it's like sober in its dealings, it's not, um, it's not something about like, um, wild oscillations between this and that it's this is this, are we going to do this and, and Venus can be coming to, you know, a nice agreement, you know, a relationship coming to a working agreement that would be a Venus Saturn thing that would be good um, you know he gave me the crypto code to his <laughs> I don't know like money you know v Venus pleasure money you know Saturn like something serious something to do with uh, I don't know responsibility um, you know, maybe having a conversation that maybe is not exciting, but you come to a place of um, solid ground, uh, an understanding of sorts that's um, a mature, uh, you know, agreement. It's, it's not, again, like we've had the best day in the world and it was so beautiful, I'll never forget it, but it's like we came to a mature decision. Like, it's that. Um, but it, but I mean, Venus can also just be very much more damaged in this process because she doesn't want to really be there. That's not where she flows the best. With Uranus, it's a little bit better. Venus, Uranus, it doesn't have to be horrifying. And in fact, Venus, Uranus is pretty fun, you know, because love, pleasure, beauty, possibly money with things out of the blue, surprising, um, total change up of energy, um, 
you know, things that were one way are now this way. There is changing energy there. And with relationships, that could be bad if you're like everything was great and now it has been reversed or now it has changed from great to something else. That might not be that great. <laughs> but if you were like saying I was alone and now this person showed up, well, then that's a change that most people would find pleasant. So it's like it's variable in its um, outcome. Venus, love, pleasure, possibly money, beauty, art, um, joy, Uranus, change, breakthrough, uh, breakdown, um, uh, liberation, freedom. There's a lot of possibilities with that. So um, that's basically the lay of the land. Um, and I've already been talking for 15 minutes, and that's insane because I thought this was a whole thing was going to be 20 minutes, and I better hurry up. So. I'm going to just start with um, the Leo rising. So with you guys, um, the Leo risings, obviously the Leo stuff that Mars just went through, Venus is now through your first house. Your, it's near your ascendant or on your ascendant, whatever degree it is. It's in your first house of self. That's the most important um, part of your chart that actually um, is most you. It's your identity. It could be your physical body, your appearance, your face, your identity out in the world, how you go about doing things, how people kind of view you a lot of times is your rising sign. Um, so that's very important uh, for you guys. Obviously, I mean, you guys are fixed angles. Um, you have fixed angles here, so that means all of this stuff happening in Saturn and Aquarius, Uranus, Taurus, and um, you know now the Mars and Venus stuff happen happening in Leo. That's all on your big um, angles, first, seventh, fourth, and tenth, and those are the most important places in the chart. So for you guys, for Aquarius, Taurus, and Scorpio, it's more um, probably personal and more maybe monumental than a person who doesn't have these things happening on their angles. And it might be like more philosophical or something kind of in the background or something kind of in a secondary place. It's not this major, you know, personal situation. So yeah, the, the Mars going through a lot of energy in that first house. The Venus going through this is a great time to make things better in your in your your personal space for your body for you know your appearance. Venus is coming to your first house. This is like a lot of rewards of beauty and you know uh, pleasure and love directly in your most personal place. Um, but she is having to you know take up arms and say I'm opposing. Saturn, which has been sitting in your seventh house of um, relationships, and that could be romantic or business, but it's a, usually a one-on-one -on -one relationship. So Saturn sitting there is that immovable object, something that is like causing a uh, blockage of some sort, an obstruction. Maybe something is a lot of responsibility or duty in that seventh house right now, and Uranus is the, I'm gonna break down the wall, I'm going to liberate myself, I'm taking this thing off, I can't stand it, throw it away. It's yeah, that energy in your 10th house of wanting to shake things up and break through and liberate in the 10th house of career or your highest public standing, where people see you, how people see you out in the world, how are you known publicly. So that energy is, um, you know, gra they're grappling together relationships, career, or public standing, and this Venus coming through in your first at least is a healing balm, and it's really coming from you personally. It's all around you personally. You might find like special little, usually with like Venus in the first, I have like gifts that sort of come to me, even if they're silly, like I just went to a um, thrift store and I found like the most amazing finds for like a dollar and they all fit me and they're beautiful and I didn't even think I needed them but here they are Venus will give you gifts um, in that first house especially on your ascendant um, so Venus sitting here is a very personal place to have this kind of healing happen it might be you who is the one to extend this olive uh, branch to whatever situation is happening and kind of um, smooth things over with a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, pleasure, sweetness, good energy. Okay, so we're moving quickly here to um, Virgo rising. So 
The Virgo risings have the Leo stuff happening in the 12th, and um, that is a place of like the attic, like where I put all this stuff that I don't know what I, ha why I even have it, and what am I going to do with it? I don't know. I'm putting it up here because I can't deal with it. But when things go through the 12th, you have to deal with it. So Mars going through your 12th, I would say the past week might have been a place where you're just like, you know, I have to dig deep into these questions. Why are these deep parts of my psyche this way? It could have to do with isolation. It could have to do with uh, addiction or possibly um, just uh, other deep personal um, situations that are not part of the waking world. They're not your job, they're not your home, they're not your siblings or anything like that. It's the deep crevices of your psyche. And Mars going through that was kind of like a motorboat going over a settled pond of debris and kicking up everything. And you're just like, oh, I have to deal with this now. Or it is being messed with um, aggressively. So Venus coming into that place should be a place of like, okay, I can have a moment now where I can treat myself to this this um, process. It doesn't have to be aggressive. It doesn't have to be the motorboat. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's a lovely lotus that's growing out of the mud of the depths. And you're like, okay, this was a gift that I found through this, you know, sorting out of whatever that realm is. And she is also sitting there saying, yeah, I have to come to terms with the um, Saturn stuff, the immovable object, the blockage, the obstruction in the sixth house of health, healing. It could be um, small pets or subordinate people that work under you, or it could be hard work that you have to do in the world that might not even deal with your job. But it's like, you know, busy work, things that you're like, I have to uh, do X, Y, Z in order to do that. I have to sort out this giant uh, closet or something um, that like six houses like kind of drudgery but I mean there's a reason for it it, it, ever, it exists there for everyone um, but Saturn is placing a lot of duty responsibility and heaviness in that place for you so hopefully Venus can try to make amends try to add a little bit of sugar or I don't know um, stevia I guess <laughs> or agave or whatever to monk fruit to your place that has been heavy with that the health the you know uh, hard work um, or possibly pets or people that work under you and then the uranus energy in the ninth in taurus is like trying to break through liberate or shake your ninth house of uh, spirituality of things that are belief systems bigger than anything else that it's not thinking with your mind it's feeling and experiencing a larger um, truth a larger belief system so shake-ups there with spirituality with religion possibly with maybe gurus or people that come into your life that expand your worldview this is all being changed um, with that sixth house kind of saying no we're going to sit here and this is how it's always been so hopefully venus would come into the 12th and you know bring some type of healing balm for um the whole situation especially the situation that was just inflamed last week okay so we're moving on to libra rising so everything that was inflamed last week was basically coming from your 11th house where Mars went through and that's a place of friends, groups, alliances, um, social justice movements uh, that you belong to, people that groups, not a one-on-one -on -one thing, it's groups, it could be fans if you create art or something, but it is a community at large, um, something you belong to, Mars going through that, inflaming it, giving fire to it, angering you and the group, or, you know, making the group angry for whatever reason, um, giving a lot of firepower to it, a lot of aggression. And um, it's it was opposing, you know, Saturn saying, I'm not moving in the fifth house of things that bring you joy, things that bring you um, happiness, pleasure. It's the place of Venus. So it's like, you know, what we do for fun. It could be sex or romance, but it could be also children. Um, even if you don't have children, it could be something to do with other people's children or children in your life. 
Um, and then the Uranian aspect of like, I want to change everything, we're going to shake up the whole ground, is uh, the tar in Taurus in the eighth. And that's uh, considered usually other people's money or spouse's money. Or it could be taxes, government money, um, things that were owed to you or you owe other people. It could be a will, an inheritance. Um, something like that and that is being shaken you, you, money other people's money that you take part in somehow or things that are maybe owed to you that you um are collecting on or other people are collecting or or you owe them and the eighth is really just more about power and an exchange of power an exchange of energy and that's being shaken up. So this Venus coming through in your 11th hopefully should make a healing moment, a balm to cover that wound that Mars left of we are fighting, we're going to brace break through, we're going to break the door down, we're going to you know, we're up in arms. This is harsh words, harsh energy and um and you know, defiant and and just with the Venus coming in, I would hope to see a little bit of um, calming that area down um, with maybe a solution, maybe something that can, you know, take the edge off the wound that was inflicted. Okay, so now we're moving on and we are to Scorpio rising. Um, all right, so the leo energy that just came the mars energy that came through in leo um again this is a fixed scorpio is a fixed uh sign so you've got the angles lit up here <clears throat> um and that means bigger the other ones are also big for people it, it, just because if it's not on your uh if, if you know angles doesn't mean it's not big it can be life-changing but especially if you have very important planets like your chart ruler in um one of those places but when we're looking at a, a sign right now that has these angles lit up it is usually more personal so this um leo stuff that has been happening in mars inflaming fighting uh you know prideful angry uh warring going through your 10th house of career of how people see you out in the world public standing your reputation that is hopefully going to see a little bit of a healing moment from Venus coming in and trying to smooth over the wound however she can. Um, because she is standing still in opposition when she comes in to the Saturn stuff, the immovable object that's like lockdown energy in your fourth house of home. So home, family, possible exact like a literal living situation or um, maybe ancestry or... Um, family roots, something like that where you've got heaviness, responsibility, duty, and um, this sense of um, obstruction maybe in that fourth house of home and family. And she is trying to oppose that, trying to strike some type of deal. Um, but again, it, it could be just like maybe a sober reckoning of whatever we can muster at this time um, because that that Uranus Taurus is still grappling with I want to burst through I want to break through I want to change everything the ground is changing in the seventh house of relationships this is a one-on-one -on -one relationship of you know the seventh house it's a partner um, romantic or business so it, things that want to change or are changing there are having some problems with the lockdown heavy energy of the duties and responsibility of the fourth home and family so hopefully the venus energy coming through in your 10th can the career and public standing can hopefully like smooth over that wound that was just like you know way inflamed and way like maybe um opened up over the past week so hopefully we should start to see this week um you know some turnarounds and and surprises maybe because i keep forgetting to say that the Venus Uranus is, um, you know, always surprise. Anything Uranus is surprising. You don't know where it's going to strike, when it's going to strike, if it's going to strike. It's just, you know, it could be very um, surprising and um, energizing with that with that Venus. Um, so there could be something uh, changing there for the best, um, but hopefully making everything a little bit more calm 
than it has been. Um, okay, so now we're moving to Sagittarius rising. So Sagittarius rising, the Mars stuff is was in it is in your ninth house. It just went through and this square, um, and now the Venus stuff coming through in Leo is in the ninth. So the ninth is that place of belief system, giant overview of how you see the world, fairness, justice, um, religion, spirituality. It's um, it could be teachers or gurus or people who broaden your like sense of cohesion possibly with the gr greater scheme of things it's not learning something small like how to change my oil it's more like learning some giant uh, a bigger truth it's definitely about the bigger truths bigger belief systems so if that was just inflamed by the mars stuff coming through anger and frustration and I'm going to break the door down kind of energy the Venus energy could be like okay we're going to smooth over that and we're going to find that there is some kind of good that we can uh, gather from whatever just happened in that area she is standing in opposition to the Saturn energy of lockdown immovable energy in the third of siblings possibly your daily route your daily life neighbors things that you do day to day um, routines that you do day to day that it could be really heavy for some reason like very like this can't change kind of energy so she is in opposition to that trying her best and then with the Uranus in your six Uranus is breakthrough liberation we want to change and shake the ground in your sixth house of health healing uh, it could be small animals pets um, people that work under you or hard work that you have to do in the world busy work things that you're just like I have to do this it might not be your career but you things you have to do um, that is being kind of shaken up um, so possibly seeing something with Venus like healing the wound of last week past couple of days maybe having a breakthrough in some kind of realm with um, the Uranus uh, stuff in the six of the health healing possible like you know busy work that you have to do um, so hopefully that would make things a lot better okay so now we're moving on to Capricorn rising so the Leo stuff is in your eighth house um, and so Mars just going through that eighth house really had to do with a fiery outburst type of energy of you know screw you I'm breaking down the door kind of energy in this eighth house of other people's money spouses money taxes wills inheritances power dynamics between people um, with like owing something you owe me I owe you this um, kind of yeah just the power plays that people you know could be doing right now but it usually has to do somewhat with a sense of other people's money other people's assets um, things like that so whatever was inflamed or um, enraged or brought to a boiling point and created this wound will hopefully be feeling a bit more soothed by Venus coming through and putting a healing balm on that situation um, she is standing in opposition to Saturn which is in your second so that's your place of your money of your earned income of assets of possibly land um, things that you own um, or have earned so that lockdown energy is sitting there being like this is not moving this is heavy this is responsible this is um, duty filled and um, just uh, sober it's it's there's no it's not like you're like having a great time with your money it's like okay we're going to focus very uh, you know severely sternly on this area uh, there's like it's not exactly fun in that area so she's dealing with trying to smooth over or balance that area Uranus the breakthrough energy the shifting ground everything shaking surprising energy is in the fifth so that's the place of love uh, well it, pleasure what we f find pleasurable what we do for fun it could be romance or sex or kids and that is you know it's changing it's moving around 
it's not what it used to be in that area. And that's kind of fun. It could be kind of fun unless you're like, I liked what it was and now it's changing to something I don't like. But Venus coming through um, in that eighth would hopefully have some sort of um, pleasant conversation going on with that energy of, you know, bringing the love, beauty, romance, uh, love, beauty, pleasure, um, possibly money to that eighth house. Um, healing that wound that was just inflamed while Uranus in the fifth could be meeting up with her and bringing some type of breakthrough um, or a, a sea change out of the blue or something like that. But hopefully things would start to feel better this week compared to how things were going last week. Okay, so now we're moving to Aquarius rising. Um, so this is another fixed sign. So that means your angles are the ones being hit by all of this stuff and that's more lit up and it's more personal than if you were someone that was just happening in another um, area of the chart. Um, so the Leo stuff in your seventh is happening. The Mars going through uh, that house was probably inflaming, uh, annoying, or uh, creating strife of some type, outbursts in that seventh house of partners, romantic or business. Um, and now Venus moving in would hopefully be like, well, she has been there for, I think a few days, maybe a week, but her going over that point again is kind of like, hi, let me, um, let me, uh, you know, put some healing balm on, uh, you know, what just took place and let me try to fix it and make it better. Um, she is standing in opposition to Saturn in your first um, Saturn has been in your first house of, you know, yourself, your identity, your body, who, uh, who you present yourself as out in the world, like your appearance. And Saturn is really locked down with like this, it has to be this way and this isn't moving and this isn't changing. And there's a lot of responsibility here. Um, so hopefully something can be agreed upon with those two realms. Um, the Uranus energy of breakthrough and shaking the ground up is in your fourth house of home and family living situation um, and possibly family roots, uh, ancestry. So that is, you know, changing, wants to change, has been changing. And maybe this Venus energy coming into your seventh could heal whatever kind of blew up in the past few days or week and heal it to like maybe a new point of a breakthrough or a new idea of some type. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we are moving to Pisces. Um, yeah. Pisces rising. The Mars energy uh, in your... Sorry, I need to drink water for a moment here. I'll just edit this out, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so the Mars energy in your six. That is the uh, where Mars just went through that point that he was just, he's still in there, but I mean, at that fiery point of like connecting to those the two grappling planets, was, uh, you know, lit up your sixth house of health, healing, uh, possible small animals, pets, possibly people that work under you and possibly hard work and like stuff you have to do. It might not be your career, but it's like busy work that you have to do kinds of things. So Mars going through there probably brought frustration, anger. I'm going to break down the door, like outburst kind of energy and v Venus coming through would be more like, um, this happened, let's try to make it better. I'm gonna put this healing balm on it. And it might not fix everything right now, but it's going to at least um, somehow soothe the wound that was just left from the past few days. She is standing in opposition to Saturn in your 12th. And your 12th is the place where we put everything we don't really wanna deal with. It's like your deep places of your psyche that we catalog, we, uh, warehouse things away because we don't know how to deal with them and um, Saturn has been sitting there and will be sitting there for a while where it's just like I'm not moving this is serious so it's like a serious heavy responsibility being sober about um, 
you know, the reality here, maybe actually being sober, you know, in the 12th house, like literally sober. Um, it could be a time of retreat, retreating from, um, you, you know, like Saturn taking over that house is kind of like, okay, the 12th is always in retreat. It's not really part of the waking world, but Saturn coming in there could be like, we've got to fix this. We've got to create boundaries. We've got to create, uh, you know, walls. This is serious. This is um, stuff that needs to be soberly looked at. Responsibility needs to be taken, something like that. Um, and it could be healing, um, you know, very much so. The Uranus stuff... Um, in the third of wanting to shake everything up, shake the ground, uh, come up with a breakthrough energy type of thing. The third is your place of siblings. It's your place of day-to-day um, -day doings out in the world, your route you take every day, daily activities that are routines, or um, your neighbors, people that live around you. So um, that is changing or wants to change. So I would say something with Venus in the sixth, and then that third, like things you do every day that you have to do, um, and then your kind of daily life, siblings, neighbors, um, you know, daily routines, something there could be coming through a breakthrough moment that might actually aid in healing the um, situation that's going on in the 12th with the deep look into the psyche. Um, Okay, so now we are going to Aries at rising. Um, so the Mars energy has been in your, uh, it is, and going through your fifth house. So that Leo stuff in your fifth house is like, um, well, the Mars through your fifth house is like, I want to do this. I'm busting on the door. I'm not asking permission. There's a lot of energy there, a lot of aggression possibly. And that's your place of things you do for fun, things you do um, for pleasure. It could deal with kids, romance, um, sex, or just anything you do that brings you happiness. And Mars is like, I want that. I'm going to get that. I'm breaking down the door. We're it's an active, aggressive kind of motion that could have gone a little off the rails, especially because of the square that it just inflamed. So Venus coming through is a lot more like, ah, like a healing balm over that wound that, you know, it doesn't maybe fix everything, but it definitely says like, this is workable, this is better, and this is feeling better. She is still standing in opposition to Saturn in the 11th, which is like, friends, groups, alliances, things you are a part of, social justice groups, or something you consider yourself one of them. That it was, it has been the Saturn lockdown, of, and this isn't moving, and it has to be this, and there's a lot of responsibility and a lot of duty, etc. And I would um, expect that to be more... Um, maybe coming to some sort of like agreement in the next uh you know tonight or next few days you know venus saturn possibly balancing out something there um, between what you want your needs the pleasure of the fifth and the needs of the group or the uh, the community at large um uh, in general like the the lockdown the responsibility kind of angle on that side <clears throat> um, and then Uranus has been in your second house. So that's shaking up the energy and changing and forcing a breakthrough um, or creating change with your money, assets, things that you have or own, possibly land. And I would expect that maybe Venus hitting that same point, whatever was lit up last week by Mars, kind of inflaming things, is now probably going to be soothed or maybe something better might um, come of it. So with that, you know, fifth, second house, like the ple something pleasurable being kind of, um, you know, worked on, soothed, uh, relaxed a little bit to possibly gain some type of breakthrough with that second house of money assets. Um, okay, so we are now moving to Taurus. So Taurus rising. Um, so the again, angular houses here. So this is a fixed sign. So all of these angles are lit up. Uh, these are big angles lit up by all this energy, more so than if you were another person who did not have these angles being lit up. So this is <clears throat> um, 
The Mars stuff has been and is in your fourth house of home, family, living situation, possibly ancestry roots. And that Mars stuff that came through last week was probably kicking things up, making things a little aggressive, making things a little uncomfortable and like, you know, fiery and um, maybe not, maybe not exactly uh, um, pleasing the Venus stuff coming in now and hitting that same point might be a like healing bomb to sort of heal the wound, maybe not make everything incredibly thousands of times better, but a lot better and a lot more insight into this is how we find the pleasure here. Um, you know, giving some type of gift in that realm because she is still standing in opposition to Saturn in the 10th, which is your place of career your public standing, your reputation. So there's still a trade off there of like, what is going to win out? How do we come to an agreement here? <clears throat> that responsibility and duty and um, heaviness that might be in the career area, maybe could have a, a great, um, you know, healing moment with Venus coming through. Um, hitting that same spot that was just inflamed and then Uranus in the first. So Uranus has been in your first for a while. It will be in the first for a while. And that's your most personal place of yourself, your identity, your body, your appearance. And, um, you know, things are changing. Uh, things are shaking. Nothing, things that once were something are now different. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's like a big kind of rebirth moment. Um, and I would see that maybe this Venus coming through to heal whatever wound was kind of kicked up in the past week might be very personally um, great for you uh, because it is making that kind of breakthrough contact with Uranus um, in your first. It again might not be like an exactly picnic type of atmosphere, but it is something that could be um, just uh, seen as uh, unexpected, maybe stroke of luck kind of energy or, um, you know, options that come through that weren't ap apparent before. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Um, okay, so the Gemini risings we're moving to. So the Mars energy is in your third. So uh, the Mars just went through that point um, in your third house of siblings of neighbors, your neighborhood, things you do every day, your route, your daily activities, routines, and learning on a basic level, like learning how to change your oil, um, or maybe book learning, but not bigger picture learning. Um, so Mars may be inflaming that area in some way, um, could now be healed in some way by Venus coming through that same spot and being like, okay, it's not perfect, but let's just put this healing balm on it and <clears throat> make things a little bit better. Um, she's standing still in uh, opposition to Saturn in the ninth and Saturn in the ninth is like your lockdown energy of like, this isn't moving, it has to be like this. There's responsibility, duty, boundaries, walls. Um, in this ninth, it's a very dogmatic kind of place for that. Like, it's always been this way with religion, with spirituality, with maybe a higher belief system, truth in a general sense. Like, maybe people, teachers that or gurus that represent a higher order to you or something like that the belief systems saturn is really like this is how it has to be these are the boundaries um where uranus in the 12th is like yeah but we're having a revolution over here in your psyche and what do you mean where i i am shaking up everything in your psyche in your 12th house of where we store everything that we don't want to look at in normal life and you have to deal with it now like I, the ground is shaking things are changing and you know, what are you, um, what are you willing to flow with here? This is changing. Are you going to go with it? Are you going to hold on to the stuff in the ninth of like, I was always brought up this way. I've always believed this. Well, what if you're having a revolution of psyche? Do you still hold on to that? I don't know. Um, Venus though, coming through working in better kind of, not the best, but kind of better, situations with that Uranus energy could be a breakthrough with things that are healing breakthrough with things that um you know could bring you um some type of pleasure or joy um and I would watch in that third house of 
siblings, neighbors, how you go about your daily life and activities, your daily motions through the through um, your life. Um, yeah, I, I would just watch for things maybe coming through that might be unexpected and possibly um, healing or, or giving you an answer in that way. Okay. And um, so that brings us to crab, the crab, the cancer risings. So Mars has been and is in your um, second house of that inflamed point of something to do with your money, your assets, things you own, land that came to a head last week or you know a couple of days ago of fiery energy break, uh, uh, you know, just more of a um, breaking down the door. I don't want to listen to you. Um, you know, aggression and possibly fighting, division. Something happened there in that house to do with that stuff, um, your money stuff. But Venus coming through now will hopefully say, yeah, that things, those things happened and we're going to now try to heal that area to the best of our ability. It might not be perfect, but a lot better coming through and saying, okay, this is how we can work with this now going forward. Um, let's maybe bring some joy and how do we find the pleasure out of this um how do we find any kind of happiness out of this she is standing in opposition to saturn still in your eighth so saturn is like the lockdown energy of we're not moving this isn't this has always been this way and it's not moving and it's responsibility it's duty and um there is no if ands or buts about it there's a wall that's your eighth house of other people's money spouse's money money that can come from taxes, government sources, um, uh, wills and um, inheritances or just power plays with things to do with uh, things that you might owe someone or someone might owe you and it might not be money. It might be an energy power exchange there but usually it has to do with money or assets in some way, power. Um, so that is locked down and then uh, the uh, Venus energy is wanting to come to some sort of agreement who's going to win out maybe she can come into things and say I want to you know strike a deal here with this um, the Uranus energy of shaking everything of being like you know in a state of change a breakthrough breakdown that is in your 11th house of friends groups alliances and community what do you belong to who do you consider yourself part of like i'm part of them that is the 11th house and that's where the stuff has been changing or is changing so i would think that venus in your second um making this angle with uranus in your 11th could be possibly healing in that wound that just came through um with your money and your assets but maybe in a surprising way maybe something to do with um, a breakthrough that you didn't see before that now seems more um, accessible or more uh, doable in some way to deal with that 11th house of um, the changing going on in groups. Um, so hopefully for everyone this, uh, this um, Venus energy can come through and just create a little bit more of let's try to find some happiness within the the ashes of what um, Mars just left behind um, and then yeah I mean I should have said this in the beginning but for anyone listening still right now this is appropriate because it's crab rising you're ruled by the moon after this happens in the past tonight the, um, the sixth and then on the eighth when she when Venus meets up with um, Uranus we're going to be feeling this okay readjustment of beauty of of values of maybe some kind of healing that came through but then we're going to have another kind of round hitting us on sunday because the moon will be going through these points and because the moon moves very quickly it will happen on the, i think the evening of sunday where the moon opposes saturn and then the moon oppose, uh, squares uranus so it's kind of like yeah remember what we just went through with venus um coming through and kind of healing these places now the moon's going to come through and be like i don't know how i feel about this like i am feeling deep like it's a silent a quiet moment for the moon to be like what do I deeply feel about this and how do I assimilate it into what I need, 
going forward, you know, I mean, it's just a quick moment. It's a, a night. It's the moon moving quickly through. But it's kind of like we're going to have another, like, look at it at that Sunday night um, with the moon coming through, hitting those exact same uh, points and saying, I, I don't know how exactly this makes me feel. Um, it could be really great. Maybe it is more of an internalization at that point of, oh, okay, I, can, I don't just have to see it or think it or you know, acquire it or believe it, but I actually feel it deeply now. Like I, I actually viscerally, like I, I can incorporate it somehow. Um, so that is what I have, and this is way too long. It's 54 minutes, but it's okay. We're just seeing what kinds of formats work here, and um, I will put timestamps in and make it easier for everyone to see what they need to see. So um, I will get back to everyone at some point, and I hope that the Venus energy um, comes through for everyone in ways that are um, pleasant are uh, uplifting in some way, are beautifying or, um, you know, healing in some way.